is Monday, February 14th, and it's Happy Valentine's Day, Happy Post Super Bowl Day, and we're going to talk everything, everything Super Bowl and the Super Bowl champions, Los Angeles Rams, baby. This is Monday Morning Football with the Guru. It's the G to the U to the R to the U. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's the G to the U to the R to the U. Welcome. Y'all know what this is. It's the show after the Super Bowl. It's like the gift and the curse, man. It's the show after the Super Bowl. It's like when you have a kid, it's like the gift and the curse. You're like, yeah, I got a baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you have the curse. You're like, oh my God, I got a baby. You know what I'm saying? That's what it's like the Super Bowl. That's how I feel. It's like the gift and the curse. Like, yes, I got a baby. Ah, yes, it's the Super Bowl. But, oh no, it's the Super Bowl. It is over, man. So as you all know, to get it all started, because I'm so excited. I just got to get this party started, man. The Los Angeles Rams are your Super Bowl champion. The Los Angeles Rams. Matthew Stafford is now a Super Bowl champion. Once you become a Super Bowl champion, you can never, ever, ever be nothing else but a Super Bowl champion. And I'm, of all people, of all people that's been talking about Matthew Stafford and his journey and his career, I am myself here. I've been riding Matthew Stafford like basically like an elevator. I've been going up, I've been going down. I've been going up, I've been going down on Matthew Stafford. Y'all might not know this, but early in Matthew Stafford's career, pre my, you know, my occupation as America's football opinion head. You know what I'm saying? I am the America's football opinion head. So pre me getting that badge and of honor, you know, I was a Matthew Stafford follower, man. I really was. I like Matthew Stafford. Y'all know I'm a Detroit Lions fan. I hope y'all could zoom this behind over here. I hope you could see the football that says Lions. So I am a Lions guy. I'm a Caldwell. I'm a Lions. I'm a Stafford guy. You know what I'm saying in a sense. But yes, just like in any other relationship, sometimes you get pissed off. So I was pissed off at Stafford for a lot of emotional hurt. Because it's like, I didn't realize, you know, in, in relationships, sometimes you're like, you think it's the other person, but it was me. And it's like, and, 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 this, and looking at Stafford's journey, I got to give him kudos for his journey, man. For what he's overcome, what he's gone through. Because guys like me labeled him. You know what I'm saying? We labeled him. We thought Matthew Stafford was a game, you know what I'm saying, was a franchise changer. You know what I'm saying? Regardless of what the situation is, we thought or I thought Matthew Stafford was that type of guy. So I put more than what he earned or what he deserved. It was my fault. I take that. It was my fault, man. What Matthew Stafford is, is one of those kids that he needs the perfect situation to be successful. You know what I'm saying? Like me, I'm, I'm sorry, I use my experience. I grew up in a chaotic situation. The goo immigrated from a third world country. So I'm very, very good in chaos. I'm a very good in chaos. I'm better in chaos than in structural situation. So you know what I'm saying? Matthew Stafford, and I looked at him like, oh, that's why I didn't really mess with him. Because he's better in a structural situation. He's better in a structural situation. He's like one of them kids. It's like, if you come from an at-risk home, and you're like, uh-oh, you're going to be a statistic. Yes, Matthew Stafford will be one of those kids. But he's put in a situation where it's stable in Los Angeles. Unlike Detroit, Detroit was unstable from the top all the way down, man. It was unstable as far as leadership, as far as what you're going to get. And the history of Detroit shows that. But the Los Angeles Rams, they have a philosophy. They have a structure. They have a game plan. They have leadership, everything I play. So the only thing Matthew Stafford really has to do is play ball. That's all he has to do. And I failed to realize that, man. I was thinking, oh, my God, man, Matthew Stafford sucks and all this. No, it was me. It wasn't you, Matthew. It was me. It was me because I put, I put too much on you, man. I expected too much. And you should have never expect from others, man. You shouldn't have expectation from others. And then I realized what Matthew Stafford really is, man. He's a great complimentary piece. He's not a life changer, man. 
You know what I'm saying? He's an additional piece you add on, man. He's not the piece. He's not the piece. He's part of a piece, man. In Detroit, we all wanted, because he was the first of all pick, we wanted Matthew Stafford to be the piece. We wanted him to be the piece. We all wanted, and unfortunately, Matthew Stafford is not built to be the piece. Yes, he has all the attributes to be the piece, but his personality traits, everything about him, he's a nice, humble guy, a nice, good guy. Like his traits shows that Matthew Stafford is more of a piece than a whole meal. And there's nothing wrong with that. And me understanding that of Matthew Stafford and that, and you've seen his success, is beautiful, man. It's like sometimes you can't make a Robin and make him be a Batman. And that was a mistake I was making my whole time, man. I was thinking Matthew Stafford is Batman, but he's really a Robin. Yes, look, when when Bruce Wayne saved or when Batman saved the world or whatever, guess what? Who else was next to him? It's Robin, man. It's like Batman can't do it all without Robin. You know what I'm saying? Batman can't do it all without Robin. He could do a lot without Robin, but he can't do it all. But we know one thing, Robin can't do nothing without Batman. And the journey and the career of Matthew Stafford, it kind of, I kind of put it like, it's Batman and Robin, man. We all wanted and we all thought because he was a first overall pick, we all thought Matthew Stafford was a Batman. And I did too. But realistically, Matthew Stafford, he looks like a Batman, but he's really a Robin. And you put him in a great situation, like in Gotham City with a Batman, guess what? You have one of the best duo to ever assemble as far as a superhero duo. Now you put Matthew Stafford in a structural situation in, the, in Los Angeles, now look what you get. You have a Super Bowl champion in his first year in freaking La La Land. Man, oh Matthew Stafford, bro. I know I've been killing you, but you know what? You deserve it, bro. You went through it, man. It's like, what makes a man, man, is going through situation, man, and still having that faith and that belief, man. And Matthew Stafford, kudos to you, bro. You know what I'm saying? You were put in, in football exile for 12, 13 years. And I thought, you know what I'm saying? I thought you were El Chapo. I'm like, they threw you in exile. I thought you are going to be able to escape and shit. But now you ain't El Chapo. You're a law-abiding citizen and shit. So it's cool, man. You got it, baby. Matthew Stafford, congratulations. The person I'm excited, I'm happy for, man. You know, it's Aaron Donald. He got 99 problems. And Aaron Donald better be one. I'm telling you. And the Cincinnati Bengals, Joe Burrow, the offensive line. I mean, Aaron Donald's out there, man. He was slapping guys, man. He was mushing folks, man. I mean, this dude wanted it. And I'm happy to see a great person, a great player, being at the highest of this situation and came out and shined, man. See, it's like, this is why you call, this is why people become stars. This is why some guys' talent is better than other talent. It's like, for you to become a star, you gotta, you gotta strive in a tense situation. You gotta strive in a situation where majority of other people are like, oh my God, they, they shrink. And Aaron Donald, once again, to showcase why he's one of the best defensive players to ever, ever put on an NFL jersey establish himself and he put himself in the history book uh on sunday man i mean what this guy did in this in the, in that last two possession for the uh for the uh for the green i mean for the cincinnati Bengals, he totally dominated that last two plays was the aaron donald playing man i'm talking about from four was it third and and, and one Aaron donald came out there boom stopped that play i was like oh snap man Aaron Donald stopped some RJ P. Ryan. And in the fourth down, we saw what Aaron, Aaron Donald did. Just straight disrupt the whole play. But I'm like, wow, bro. This is what they're talking about. Big time players. And when the lights comes on, you know what I'm saying? This is the difference between star players and just regular players, bro. You're going to have 99 problems. Lost, I mean, um, Cincinnati Bengals. And Aaron Donald made sure he was the 99 problems. And he gave it all to y'all, man. Congratulations to one of the best to ever do it, man. I love greatness. Well deserved. One of the nice guys, man, in this league. Considering of all this nonsense, you probably about to start hearing in the offseason. Because we know what the offseason is. It's about the media putting NFL guys or basically killing their reputation. You know what I'm saying? So before we do that, my man Aaron Donald, 
He's one of the good guys, man. He's one of the good guys, and they always say good guys finish last. No, no, no. Aaron Donald is a good guy, and he's finished first, and right now, he got himself a ring, man. And then, he got himself a first ballot into Canton, Ohio, and now he's going to be renownedly known as one of the top three defensive players to ever play this game, man. And, I, and, and when I talk about that, I don't mention um, pre, pre-segregation. I don't do all that, all right? You know what I'm saying? I'm talking about the 90s. Football really started on the 90s. So if it didn't happen, if it happened pre-90s, I don't care about it. I don't care. It didn't happen. That was in real football. The 90s, that's when football started, bro. <laughs> Congratulations once again, man. Aaron Donald, one of the best to ever do it, man. Congratulations. That was very impressive. I mean, he didn't want to block you. Hey, you do what you do, homie. <laughs> and now I want to move on to... Oh, man, it's all the stars in La La Land. All the stars, man. All the stars. The next one, man. He got a cup full of stars, man. He got a cup full of confetti, man. I'm talking about Cooper Mother effing MVP cup, baby. I'm talking about this dude was wearing straight up double D cups, man. He was wearing double D cups on Sunday, man. Talking about, yeah, boy, I've got some big titties. Cooper Cup was great, showing some big titties by having two titties to win the game during the clutch time, man. He was shaking them double freaking cups, man. I tell you, Cooper, hey, like who would ever imagine? And I know the debate is coming. Cooper Cup is the best receiver ever. This and that. I know. Hey, look, 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 look. slow down, slow down, chill out. I've seen many, 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 many receivers in my days. And I know you guys are gonna be like, guru, guru, look at his numbers. Whatever reception, blase, blase, this and that. Look, bro, look, look, look. If y'all wanna do that analytic to see who's the best, that's cool. You have to live with that. Cooper Cup is a very, very good receiver that's put in a very, very good situation that made a very, very big time play. And my man is a star. So with that said, let's just focus on that. Focus on Cooper Cup, man. I don't know what, what Lou Anaroma and the Cincinnati Bengals was doing, man. But you know what? I can't even say nothing. They tried. It's just they could, nothing worked. I know what they were trying to do. They know I, it just didn't work. There's just certain things that didn't work, and that just shows the greatness of Cooper Cup, man. I mean, that was great, man. Cooper Cup right there. I'm talking about feel. He has just the, the feel for zone coverages, bro. It's like this guy just knows where the zone is, where the empty space, when to throttle down, when to sit down. I just, the nuances of football. This dude is a football freaking nerd like the goo, and I love that shit, man. I'm talking about Cooper Cup, baby. Let's go, man. Let's go. Me and, the, me and you got to sit down and just straight geek it out, man. Geek it out, man. We could, we could take it. We could have a glass cup of water, man. We could do all these cup jokes, man. You know, tea cup. I do all the tiki, all the Cooper Cup jokes, bro. But my favorite, dog, man, because you got the D cup, baby. That's my favorite cup. Y'all could like all those other cup, man. Tea cup, all that. The guru like that D cup, man. <laughs> Hey, let me stop, man, with this, man. This is a Disney show, right? It's a Disney show? No, it's not a Disney show. I can say titties. I can say whatever the hell I want. <laughs> but you know what? I'm going to take a quick break. When I come back, oh, man, I got to talk about Zach Taylor and the Cincinnati Bengals, man. Because I am I got to beef with Zach Taylor, exactly what Zach Taylor did. Because I got enough other issues with this Cincinnati Bengals, but one issue, and that is Zach Taylor. Freaking Taylor. This is Monday Morning Football with the Guru. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's the G to the U to the R to the U. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's the G to the U to the R to the U. Man, now it's like, the first step was about the happy confetti. Yeah, the first segments. Yeah, I was like, happy the Rams, stars. Ah, yeah. Now I got to talk about what pissed me off about the Super Bowl, man. Specifically about Zach damn Taylor, dog. Man, Zach Taylor, this game was in your was set up for you right in your platter. You had what you had to do, bro. 
I, I just don't understand how certain coaches just outthink themselves and they have no rhythm. Like Zach Taylor has no rhythm of play calling, bro. And I'm standing, I'm starting to realize that. That's it's like I, I couldn't put my hand on my finger because I was waiting for like a year and a half, two years, and on putting my finger on this dude Zach Taylor. I'm like, you know, I like Zach Taylor. I'm like, yeah, he can cook, but now I really understand why. What irks me about Zach Taylor? It's his sequence of play calling. Like he don't know how to sequence and put together stable of play call, man. And, it's, and, and, and it was evidence in his Super Bowl, man. And if you're not the nerd, if you're not a geek, this might go over your head. I'm a football geek. I'm a football nerd. So this might go over your head. So I might lose y'all, man. I appreciate y'all for tuning in. You know what I'm saying? And for you guys, I appreciate y'all. You know what I'm saying? Y'all can go ahead and do what y'all do now because I got to nerd out for a second, man. You know what I'm saying? I got to nerd out, man. It's like, you watching this game, the success you see they had, man. Every time they came in, in, in 12 personnel and 13 personnel, they were having success running the ball, man. They were having success running the ball in that personnel grouping. And I just don't know why. Why, man? Why every time they get four or five yards, every time they come in, in 12 and 13 personnel, but yet the very next play, they will go pass the ball two or three straight times, man. I'm sitting here like, come on, man. Why is your sequence of play calling, bro? What is your sequence of play calling? It's, it's off the radar. You got to go. You got to. You want to see something hits. When you pinch someone, right? Or when you punch someone and they say, ow. You know what you do? You keep punching them in the same spot, bro. You keep punching them in the same. Once I hear you say, ouch. Guess what, bro? I don't need to worry about no other places. Because I know I could hurt you out, bro. I know I could hurt you out. The Bengals was hurting. You was hurting the um the um the Rams as far as that personnel group. And I'm sitting here like, bro, when number 70 came in the game, Deontay Smith, when he came in the game, we saw what they did, man. They were averaging about five yards a pop, man. You talking about fourth and one? You, you, I get it. Yes, I want to put it in Joe Burrow hand. Yes and that. But let's say the man was gimping out there, man. The man was gimping out there. If you want to be Mr. Analytical, Statistical, whatever the hell your young coaches be on some BS now, instead of just looking at, hey, bro, this is working. I need one yard. Every time you got in that personnel grouping, you got over one yard. Every single time. Every time you got in two tight end set. Every time you came in in the three tight ends and bring the extra lineman, you got you, you have yards, man, and you got cute. You got cute, Zach Taylor, and you just showed how you're just a regular coach with a great quarterback, bro. It's like you kind of, I'm looking at you, man. You kind of smelling like a Mike McCarthy, man. I'm not, <laughs> you don't smell like a Mike McCarthy, man. The only reason why you're good because you got yourself a good quarterback, man. I'm, I'm looking at you, man, Zach Taylor. I don't like it, man. You know I'm a fan of us, man. We we Nebraska, we Corn Huskers and all that, man. But I'm smelling something. I don't really like that stench coming out over there, bro. I don't like your X's and O's. I I don't like it. I don't think you're very good as far as a motivator. Honestly, man, if you ain't from Nebraska, you didn't come from Nebraska. Honestly, I won't. I, I'll, I'll be looking at you like do I look at Kingsbury, dog? Like, I don't see nothing like, what is your philosophy? And no, you're, you you know football. I don't want to hear, oh, he runs the Shanahan scheme. See, all y'all don't know freaking football. Watch the film. What is the philosophy for Kyle Shanahan? I mean, for uh, um, whatever his name is, Zach Taylor. He don't have his own philosophy yet, bruh. He don't have a philosophy yet. And that's the main issue right there, man. That's the main issue that I might be for Zach Taylor, man. I mean, I'm just like, this is just was piss for, bro. I thought the man was was better than what he is, but from the looks of it, I don't know if Zach Taylor could be that to ever be that guy, bro. You know what I'm saying? Unless Joe Burrow, you know what I'm saying, become one of the greats, bro. But right now, the way I'm looking at Zach Taylor, he looked like more of like a Mike McCarthy, man. You know what I'm saying? I don't even think he's very good as far as a, a, a play caller in Mike McCarthy's prime. I really don't like the way the play calls. I really don't like the plays. Um, Zach telling them, I really don't, man. I really do not. I really do not. I don't think. And when I keep saying this sequence, it's like this. That grouping was working. Instead of doing one play and then two passes, two runs, and then sequence it with a play action in between. Like, that's what, I mean, you got to add up plays, man. Compound it and stack up plays, man. Stack it, stack it, stack it. But they weren't stacking it. It's like he was trying something here, and then he got an open set there. There was no correlation to his play calling, man. 
one play, he's in 13 personnel. The very next play, he's in empty set. And then the very next play, he's in 11 per I'm like, dude, there is no sequence to his play calling, man. There is no cohesion to his play calling. And I don't like that crap, bruh. I don't like that, Zach. Till I'm looking at this. The 12 personnel was and 13 personnel was working, man. It was working doing out this game. And you didn't utilize it uh, um, enough. And that's the reason why your ass is uh, uh, lost the Super Bowl, for I ain't blaming this on Joe Burrow. I ain't blaming it on nothing. I'm blaming this on the coach. Because the coach did not put this team in the best situation to succeed. And that's why, that's why you that's the difference between an average coach and a great coach. It's putting your players in situation to succeed, man. And I'm sorry, when I look at the Cincinnati Bengals, right now, Zach Taylor is the second best coach on the roster behind the defensive coordinator, Lou Anaroma, bro. Because I saw the in-game adjustments Lou Anaroma could do. I've seen it. He showed it to me this throughout this whole playoff run, but I've not seen no in-game adjustment from the offensive side and, and Zach Taylor. No, I haven't, man. No, I haven't, man. Because I don't think, oh, I, I haven't. I, there's nothing. I have not seen it. And that's disappointing. And that's why the Cincinnati Bengals have not seen a Super Bowl championship this season. One thing we're going to say is, it's been a great football season. It's been a great Monday morning football, football season. And everything is so sad because we're moving on to my favorite part of the season, the off season. So stay tuned, like we all know, football it's a full year round when it comes to Monday morning football, the podcast, baby. Football season never dies, and we're going to transition into the off season. And, you know, that's my favorite season. That's where we talk about the GMC. The off season is how you build to see who's going to be in the Super Bowl. As you all remember, last off season, guess what happened? Matthew Stafford got traded to the Los Angeles Rams. And everybody knew when that trade happened, the Rams became a Super Bowl contender and a Super Bowl favorite. And look, a year later, guess what happened? The Rams won the Super Bowl. So stay tuned and keep subscribing and following and supporting Monday Morning Football with the Guru. Like this, love this, share this, and I am out. To the U, to the R, to the U.